Hello everyone, this is Julie from August Birdsong, and I'm just bringing you another video today uh, about how to make uh, jelly prints. And um, these are some that I made the other day. I have not um, done anything more with them, but just so you know, in case you haven't seen my earlier videos, what I will ultimately end up doing with these is turning them into something like this. Uh, this is uh, a visual journal, I'm calling it, and it is all made up of jelly prints. And in this case, there are a few uh, Im digi prints, uh, images from Medieval Mirage, which is um, a digital print store on Etsy. And here's another one from Medieval Mirage. And then I'm also adding things uh, like images of individuals from uh, digital kits from, this one's from Mrs., or this one, sorry, not Mrs. Cog's Crafts. This is from Farm Mirage. And there'll be other ones um, that are from Mrs. Cog's Crafts, which is another store on Etsy. So if you look at these, all of this texture and paint is made while you do uh, jelly print uh, printing. I am at a loss for words today. It's as soon as the video comes on, all of a sudden my vocabulary kind of falls apart. So sorry about that. So this is um, an example of kind of the goal of where I want to take these different prints. This is another one, Mediterranean Blues, I'm calling it. And this is going to be in a series um, from the ancient world and it's a series I'm calling ancient times and each of these little visual journals is uh, like a um, a snippet a, a snapshot of kind of what at least I interpret um, the ancient world might have looked and felt uh, visually color wise you know texture wise all of that and so it's just my take on the ancient world. All of these were made using um, an envelope and I cut it open and if you look at the shape of these journals they're made everything is mounted on an envelope like this and you could use any envelope you don't have to use an envelope that's just what got me going uh, and then everything's been built up on top of that using uh, jelly prints and uh, images, like I said, from the Etsy shops and Medieval Mirage, as well as stencils. And so today I'm just going to be playing with the jelly printing process, showing you how I make these basic jelly prints that then can get built up on uh, these envelopes into little journals. And <clears throat> here are just some again from the other day and one of the uh, things I always work towards in the the jelly printing process is trying to pick up the grungy bits of other jelly prints and what this means is I'm gonna move my black paper a second this is my big jelly print plate under here. And I'm going to just move it up, pulling it up. And if you look at it, and I keep it when I'm working on it, keep it just in the base that it came in. See all that old paint on there? And a dirty jelly plate can be a very rich tool. Because see all that old paint kind of crusted on there. That is one of the extras you get in the, the print making process. And so that's really, if you saw the bottom here, that's what I'm going for. Is not only making the prints themselves, but pulling the extra bits on here. 
from that. So let me put the black paper back just for a minute and just generally take you through some of the prints the other day. I sort of organized them by kind of the color and, and uh, you know, general colors. So these are sort of the blues, the greens. Of course, there's some, some other colors in between. And then, again, if you get, let's see here on this, some of, see that extra texture right here? It is rough when you touch it because it's bits of paint that came up like I just showed you when you did the print. This is from a stencil. I'll get that out later. It's a real faint print of it, but I could still find a use for that. Uh, here is this one. And again, all of these designs you're getting in the background are stencils I put down and then um, did different pulls from them. And I'll show you in this video how I did that. Here's another one. Um, again, you can see a little bit of, an, uh, this is a mandala stencil up here. Some of this is just the old paint that came off down here. This is a Venetian uh, building stencil from Stencil Girls. Uh, Carolyn Duby is the artist who made that. And then this is a real faint uh, copy. I don't know that I would use it. I have a better one. But it's from this stencil of this woman. And so, again, you can see that one picked a little bit of her face up, but not, not enough that I'm necessarily going to use it that way. Um, these are all things that will potentially be turned into um, the cover for these journals or portions. Like I could take this building here and tear it out and make a pocket or just a focal point out of it. Here's another one in um, the blues. And again, I'm, I'm kind of going through them by colors. This one I'm going to hold up. Look at all of that texture on the edge there. And it just, it comes off with the prints. And it's a good thing. This one, eh, this could use more work. So that, that'll probably get thrown in. I like this one. Um, and it, it does have, look at this purple, um, grunge paint that came off with it and it works with that blue and then on this side you have this this kind of light greenish gray that came in on the edges and in the middle these lines were actually I used some um let's see it was the uh um Dina Wakely she has these little paint acrylic paints and this one's called marine I think it was this one and I had just you know kind of squirted it on the jelly plate a little bit and I tried to to roll out a lot of it but obviously some of that original that just got roll you know squeezed out that way came out that way on the print which is really cool and these patches of white, too, I first put the paint down, and even though I did some spreading, it took hold in that original glob, which I wouldn't always want it to do, but in this case, <clears throat> I think it came out kind of cool. It reminds me of nighttime. And almost like the, the shadows of light from the moon, if you were looking through trees or long grasses or something, that's what comes to my mind. Maybe you see something very different with it. So that has a lot of possibilities. I really love the pattern here against, you know, kind of the golds with that blue and the white. And then on this side, if you can see it, it's just faint, but there's some other stencil patterns that were picked up with it. This is sort of the end of the, the blues and the greens. Here's part of that mandala. Here is just some grunge that was picked up. And here is that woman I showed you the stencil of just a, a minute ago, right? And so that's a much better print of her. And so I'll probably end up tearing this out and using using her as a focal point or a, a tag or something.
So this is sort of the end of the blues and the greens. Okay, and here again, look at that texture on there. And that's, you know, that's extra. That That's the freebie that just comes up and you're hoping uh, that it will. Here is uh, kind of the browns and beige and you'll still see, you can still see some of the blues and the purples and stuff coming through this one. And this is another stencil from uh, Stencil Girl products. I have been a member of theirs um, for probably about three, four years now and, and have a, a big collection of their stencils. They're wonderful. They're unique. Um, and uh, anyways, um, that's where these have come from. Here's another one. This one, I was using this paint. It's just some Amsterdam acrylic. Uh, let's see. This is called Copper. And this is the, you know, how it came out. And again, you can see just some of the stencils. Here is actually a piece of sari silk that got, it was just a little strand that I don't even know. It came, it got on the jelly plate from somewhere. But see that how it adds texture and interest. It makes me think of old walls. Old walls. And old artwork, that kind of thing. These, this is a bird stencil. And um, anyways, that's what you're looking at there. You can see again some of those colors picked up. Here's some mandala, some blue. Here's another one of the birds. Now this one didn't turn out as good. And look here. Can you see that paint hanging off the edge? What I might do is actually kind of pull it off a little and take some gel medium and just kind of glue it somewhere in here. But that, you know, that's how it came off as I pulled the print. And it doesn't matter that, you know, that it's not all perfect of the birds. It's this kind of thing that I'm going for, which is, is more of a grunge look. Um, because the grunge expresses the, the passing of time. Things are worn out. They're ancient. Um, you know, rain and sand and everything else has, you know, pollution in the modern world. These are beetles. And this, again, um, is a stencil from Stencil Girl. And then what I do sometimes, I'll show you this when I make the print, I usually can only fit one whole paper, like here's the next one. So a whole paper on it and then half of or so of another page. And that's why some of these have like two different things, two different prints going on them. But that's okay because a lot of these I'll, you know, I'll be ripping them down um, and in different ways. This one, I love that. It's like a lace background and um, just really pretty and all and deep in there. Okay, let's see here. Almost done. And then we'll get to the jelly printing. Here is a purple one. Here's more of that lace stencil just used with different paint. Here's a real grungy one using, uh, well, it was a stencil with this motif on it. You can kind of see, oh, and look at this. See that paint there and along here? All of that texture. And I am very much a beginner with jelly printing. Um, I mean, I've had these for a few years, but I honestly didn't pull my jelly plates out for the past um, year or longer. And so if, if I can do it and, it, you know, I'm just doing basic techniques, anybody can do it. This is a small jelly print plate. And um, 
this was the first one I bought. This is five by probably seven. Yeah, five by seven. And you can see uh, this side is, is the bottom of it. But you can just see, you know, this is an old... Um, um, leftover from the stencil I just did this a little bit ago and so that was on there and I was just doing some small jelly printing just kind of building up layers and all just using this and and you just put the paint down and then if I wanted a solid I just put it like that pulled it up if I wanted this I put that down over the paint pulled this print and then pulled this and what was left became this print, okay? So that's using a small one. And that, you know, if you're new to jelly printing, that was a really good way for me to start because it wasn't too intimidating, okay, that size. And it was easy for me to start playing with but not necessarily feeling um, intimidated by. Beneath this is my big jelly plate. And this one, let me get this out of the way there. This one is, let me look at the paperwork, 12 by 14. And I just keep it in the packaging base here. But look at, again, all that grunge on there. And that's what we're looking to pull up. Uh, so I'm going to just do some uh, using the big one right now. Get him kind of sunk in there. You don't need to leave them in here. I just find it's just kind of easy. It stays put. And what I like to use is I just buy inexpensive drawing paper. And it's nothing fancy. You know, it's fair, fairly light, but it's heavier. It's heavier than um, computer paper, but a little, but lighter and more flexible than cardstock. And that's, that's what I like to work with. You can, you know, work with tissue paper on it. You, you know, you can put book pages on it. Um, whatever you have on hand and, you know, want to use. So we're just going to start. I'm, I'm just going to start real basic. Uh, and we'll see what we get. Um, you know, this is all impromptu, so... We'll see uh, what we can pull up on this and what bases we can can use. I will put down some stencils here, but I think to start, I'm just going to put some basic colors. So I'm going to just kind of um, start the same way as what I just was working a few minutes ago with the smaller plate and just building up color. Because this is such a big plate, it'll take up the whole paper a lot quicker. Okay, so that's what that's what we'll just start with. So this is just inexpensive, this is from Michaels. It's called Artist Loft um, Paint. And you know, I'm just gonna randomly kind of smear it around. Let me stand up again so I can see what you're seeing on the screen. And I'm just gonna do Not a very thick coat, and I'm not right now trying to necessarily get all the stuff on the edges. We'll just start simple and build build up from that. With this, it looks like there's a lot, but I'm going to just brush it off over on this, and I'll show you. This is all it has. Okay, this is the one I was working earlier. This is all that came off of that. So now, I'm just going to... In this case, I'm just going to put it down the center. I'm just going to do one piece. I like to kind of rub it around. And then pull it back. And there you have that. And um, so if you look, you can see these other colors. It's, it looks like navy blue kind of. It's probably a combo of the blues and the purples I used the other day. Now... This isn't done, but just I put a little bit of this down and it pulled it, but you got all this other stuff. 
So let's do um, another one. We'll, we'll come on here again, but we'll try to pull some of that other paint on there. And I think what I'll use for this one is maybe we'll just even do a little combination of some white and maybe just a little bit of blue. Um, let me get a different blue. Maybe a, you've seen me use this quite a bit, but we'll just try a little bit of this one. I'm not going to worry too much about, um, you know, mixing it and really planning a lot. I just need to pay attention to even what what I'm saying on the video and all. It's like too many things at once. My mind just, you know, it's like patting patting your head and rubbing your tummy. You know that one where you you just it's like you're trying to concentrate on everything and at the same time not sound like a total idiot. That's what it's like making the videos so far. I mean, I enjoy it, but it's it's kind of crazy. Okay. Now, let's also, I'm going to roll that off. Let's throw in, these are some texture plates. Texture plates are like stamps, but they don't have the foam uh, section to like glue on something. And so here, I'm just going to just randomly plop it down. Here's another one. These came, uh, I got them from uh, Joggles, and Joggles.com is a store. That's where I also bought my big plate. And um, we'll just use some of these, see what we get. Kind of looks like waves. And there's more circles, and they're, they're fun, too. I have no idea how this is all going to look. I'm going to put just a piece of blank paper here. And as I pull them off, okay, I'm going to just take them, pat them down. And this is like what, what you get when you just pull them off randomly. I'm going to do that fairly quick. It really surprisingly doesn't pull away a lot of paint, you would think. There would be more, and I'll show you here with this here. Okay, if you heard me stamping around, that's all that came off those texture plates. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip this one, and I'm going to actually, what I think I'll do is I'm going to put this piece here, and this is what I was telling you before. I don't have paper big enough for the whole sheet. So I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to rub it over, and rub it, what I'm doing is I'm really rubbing it at those edges where that good old paint is stuck. Okay, maybe rub that a little bit more, and I don't know. Okay, we'll just, we'll see, you get what you get, all right? Now, here is some on that first pull. That's okay. Look at this big section of blue, though, that didn't come up. And probably the people who are experts with jelly prints probably would do this differently. Uh, I'm not an expert, so I'm kind of learning with you. Here's another one. Now, since there's so much blue, I'm going to go in with more of a cream uh, or off-white. Let's just try. This is just an acrylic paint. It's actually from something called Kids uh, Kids with Z-A-W. And I, I bought something that this came with when my daughter was younger. Let me see. Okay. And this is kind of a, a gold uh Beigey, beigey gold. Okay, and I'm hoping this is going to pick up more of that blue with it, as well as anything else. 
and again anything it doesn't pick up that is just extra that you'll probably pick up on something later so with this I'm not going to put another stencil down I want to just see what's left and let me just get a fresh right well I could use this with one of them there's a lot of blue there, so I'm going to put this one maybe on this side this time. And then I'm going to use this, the other half, to pull there. Okay. And you can even do other stuff, let it just sit. Sometimes that's better, letting it just sit and really soak into the paper. I think Dina Wakely, I think I saw a video of her saying like when she's done for the day, she puts, you know, something like what I just did down. And then when she comes back to it the next day, she pulls it up. So let's see what, well, there's still a big glob there I can see. That's okay. Ooh. And you maybe can't tell. I am pulling it up, but I'm also pulling it with some tension so that it's it's really kind of pulling the paint. I have the paper held really tight. It did pull that blue. Okay. Now, this I wouldn't call pretty. At this point, it's, it's kind of interesting, but it has potential. Here's some other stuff with potential. Now, let's see what this one does. This is looking promising. Ooh, let's see. I've been practicing the past few days, a little nervous to make the video because it's hard. I don't know for sure what the, the jelly prints will look like. You know, a lot of it for me is still guessing, but there you can see that one did a real nice pull with it. And so that, that one came out really good. All right, now maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna add another color to this maybe and go over it with this and see if I can pull some more of that. I think for this one I might use, this is Dina Wakely's uh, Night, it's, it's like an extremely dark navy, almost black, but it's kind of nice because it isn't, isn't totally um, black. And I'm also just going to throw on a little silver, and this is again a Dina Wakely. Um, I'm just kind of just trying this one's called sterling i actually i found this at hobby lobby on a clearance so you know paints can be expensive um you know what i found with jelly printing um i just use what i have some of it's cheap yeah i save my pricier paints for things that maybe i'm i'm a little more confident that i know what i'm doing okay um, and some of them are just the, the cheapy, cheapy paints that you find at your local craft store. Okay, and just thinning it out. And we'll see. Oh, now I'm nervous. What if it doesn't look like anything? Okay. But what if it does? I mean, you know, it's 50-50. And worst case scenario, I turn the paper over and do a print on the other side. I think, let me just get another new piece. Let's try this. Now, I live in Colorado, which is very... It's a dry state anyways. It's sort of semi-arid. 
and right now in the summer it's very hot we're in the high 90s and we're dealing with all kinds of forest fires in the mountains i live in the the suburbs of denver which is on the plains but i'm i'm near the foothills which lead into the mountains and so we've been having a ton of smoke from forest fires and um I brought this up. My point was just I live in a, a dry state, and so gl uh, not glue paint might dry differently for me compared to if you're in a real humid state or country. Um, this is you know things dry pretty quick here. Now I'm happy with this. I like that night color. See the texture on there? Okay. Let's see, and we still have plenty on there to work with still. This one, uh, he didn't, I, I took a little longer getting him down, and I think that's why this side didn't pull as well. So let's go in with white again. And I've got a big gob of glue stuck on that. Let's just put some there. And this again, this is this Amsterdam. It's sort of a medium priced one you know I always try to look for um, sales if it's not the real cheapy paint um, and if you can get them they have some kind of a coupon or a discount of some kind that's always good too okay let's see I don't know how much we'll get on this side but let's give it a try Okay. I just rolled off on there too. So let's just see what we can pull up. I did the majority on this side. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll just throw this on again and see what we come up with. It may not look great, but maybe it will. Like I said, I like to, you could use your um, brayer and roll on there too. Um, I just, with my hands, it's good to try to get those edges. Okay, let's try this again. All right. Oh, this is interesting. different textures remember I'm also going to tear some of these up to create like with these to create those different parts of the pages so it doesn't matter if the whole page doesn't look great I look at this and I think oh that would be a great strip to use uh, or this here or keep adding to it okay but that that's the kind of thing I'm looking for is the parts that will maybe this one yeah still torn up into strips though it could be interesting um, this right down here imagine if you just you know cut a part of this out you could make a tag out of it tear the edges distressing you know all those little tricks can make something that looks really blah right now look really interesting down the road. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to start adding um, some stencils. And um, maybe we'll also kind of work into some of the red tones. I was trying to get away from as much of the blue today. Um, and I've got some brown here. And here we might bring a little bit of that green in. Um, so we'll just we'll just kind of see what we get. And maybe just a little of the brown. And let's go for it.
the air quality has been so poor from these forest fires. I mean, it just looks like Colorado, we rarely have fog because um, we just don't have the moisture, the humidity and all. And right now outside, it looks like a foggy day. And it's, it's the smoke from these fires. Okay. So here's a fresh piece. Let's give it a try. I'm not going to worry about that little bit. We'll just take the one piece to start. That's one piece. Oh, and I was going to do a stencil. Okay, well, we'll do it on top of on top of this. Ooh, okay, I am getting some of the bits and pieces, and that's kind of interesting. Ooh. And maybe what we'll do is go in with um, a stencil and add that on top of it. So let's maybe, let me just find maybe just a nature one or, um, let's see, I'm off to the side here. Let's maybe even try this stencil, the lace one. And I'm going to put a light coat of a darker paint on that but a light coat. So let me just look in here and see. Maybe. Okay. Some of that purple. And let's start. And I like to mix some things. I don't know if that's the smartest thing to do, but to just see what you get with different combinations. So let's try this. I'm gonna put that stencil down here in a second then. Okay. I'm gonna put it like that on there. Okay, the first print I'm going to pull, uh, just to be a little safer since I do have an audience, I'm going to start this one just on a plain piece. See how the colors look. So, in this case, I think I will use my brayer, and it's just... Basically, I'm just using it so I'm picking up colors in that stencil. Okay, so there's that. We can always come back to that. And then, let me just see here my choices. Maybe let's try even this one. I'm going to pull the stencil up, and really, there's it doesn't have much paint on it just a little you could try rolling it off on something but you don't have to let's try this one and just see you know if i really mess up one that you liked a print that you liked sorry but that's how it goes sometimes you are amazed and sometimes you go yuck that looks terrible but it, every time you pull, it's sort of like, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? I do like it through here. This side needs some more work done. But that part has potential. Again, think about it. You tear it off. You use it as background or strips of it. And you have these neat layers in there that are, are interesting. Okay, I think I'm going to do one more pull with a stencil and call it good because I know you guys don't always like to, to watch super long videos. So let's see. Maybe we'll try to do something more with this one. And let's go ahead and 
I'm going to again use this is what I did that time. I don't know if it'll have the same effect, but we'll start with that. See what we get with it. Might have something interesting. Isn't that a pretty color? And for those little thin lines I just squirted on the jelly plate, look at how much paint that actually gave me. More than I even expected. I'm gonna fill this whole thing across with it. We'll see. Okay, and let me grab the stencil. Again, like I said, it's you're tr doing a gazillion things all at once. It gets very, very confusing. Uh, I'm going to put that one there. And maybe part, let's just do this. Um, these are, I think it's Hamza's, I think. I might be wrong, don't quote me on that, and I, I don't have time to, to look right now, but that might be the name of it. Oh, let's try. This is the brown. Let's just try this on that, and just take a half thing here. So I'm going to just brayer on top. And that hardly pulled anything. That's kind of disappointing. Sorry about that, but we'll see what happens. Okay, now there's where the magic may be. Let's, instead of that side, I'm going to just turn it over. And I'm going to... We'll see. So here, I know the other ones... Ooh, now this isn't pulling it up. All right. Well, it sort of did, but I think what I'll do is I'll add a white, and I think it'll, a fresher paint, it had such a thin coat. So we'll come back to that. Let's see what the bird one is looking like. Okay. There you go. So there's the stencil with the birds in the bushes. And all, and I'm happy with that. I'm going to set that aside. But now we still have, if you can see it, real light in the background there. Let's go ahead and let's just try pulling it on this side. I don't know. It may need to get another coat of paint. The fresh paint seems to really pull the, the stuff with it, but we'll give it a try. You can still see there's still some in there. Okay, you can't tell it's the birds in the bushes, but it, it's an, an interesting texture, but it definitely will do more with that. Final thing. I'm going to put down, let me find another, um, just kind of a, a neutral. This one is just a cheapy apple barrel. I don't even know what the name is. It's like Pinter, it's like it's like a khaki kind of oh khaki. That's why it's called that, I guess. This is cheapy paint, but let's see if we can get these last bits up. It's not my favorite color at all, but it can look kind of cool with other stuff. Now I'm laying this one on kind of thick. And we'll see what effect that has. And I'm not going to put another stencil down because I'm hoping it will still give me some of those prints we just did. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, I'll just put that there. Okay. And then on this side, let me find another one that eh, wasn't so great. I think we'll try maybe just that. And we'll see what we get. And then 
it's going to be time to end the video. Or I could leave you in suspense and end it right now and make you wait. Let this sit. That, that would be another option. But we'll see. Let me see. No, this is interesting. The color isn't my favorite, but it did pick up the birds. So if you can see the, the outline of it. Now with that one, you I don't know that I would worry about it looking like birds. It might just be good texture in the background. It did, however, pick up some of those purple uh, things. And then look at that right there. On the bottom I like it right through here it's real pretty so there's that and then last one oh this is a mess but it's left us some interesting stuff well, you know actually I think it's kind of interesting I'll turn it sideways so you can it's sort of interesting and again if I tear down the edges and do distress ink and stitch it and you know all the other stuff things that look kind of ugly at this stage actually become really interesting uh once you know you put the polish on them and and dress it up a little with the other stuff but i hope you learned something today or maybe learned what not to do in some cases i'm not sure um I'll bring you a few more videos as I'm on this journey with my jelly printing and my ancient, ancient times. Um, I'm going to probably go back and maybe try to pull some of this, or I might just leave it for tomorrow and then put a fresh coat of paint down and see what comes up tomorrow. Maybe I'll do that. That could be another video. So always potential. Just keep at it. So give it a try, and um, I'll see you another time. Bye.